Hi, I wanted to share with you the One Year Bible before we get started on our journey. I have several versions of the One Year Bible in my lap. I've read them all. I had one version, the chronicle, chronological version, and I gave that one away. I read it and almost got through the end of it, but it wasn't my preference. I liked it. It was a good experience. But I didn't uh, want to continue. So I have the one year Bible that I've already showed you. The, um, the Living Bible translation. And I also have the one year Bible that fell apart. I'll show you. Um, if I can get my camera situated. Good. And it's falling apart. They say if your Bible's falling apart, your life probably isn't. And uh, I read this one every night before I went to bed. And I just, you know, read through. And now it is, it's my original. Well, almost my original. And uh, it's really not in very good shape at this point in time. So I leave that one kind of in a box so that I don't have to uh, worry about it totally disintegrating. This one, this Bible here, let me get my glasses on, is the one that we're going to be walking through together. This is a Bible that I gave my mother-in-law, and it's the one-year Bible. Um, it's a large print, and my mother-in-law wasn't using it, so I borrowed it. The Bible is the Word of God. But it's also God, the Word. It, the Bible says that out of your heart, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. So if this is God's Word, and there are lots of ways to prove that this really is God's Word, then it really is His heart. So when I read the Bible, I'm reading the heart of God, and I'm understanding Him and knowing Him better and better. It is... Uh, the Tyndale Publisher, Tyndale House Publishers Incorporated from Illinois. And again, they have several. This particular one, copyright, was 19, uh, 2004. It's the second edition of the New Living Translation. And it is separated into parts of the Old Testament, parts of the New, parts of Psalms, and a little part of Proverbs. They have three plans, the revised one-year plan, the two-year plan, and the three-year plan. The revised one-year plan is to read some in the morning and some at night. I like to read. For many years, I read it the night before so that if I didn't get up early enough in the next morning to read, then I had already taken care of it. Um, but I didn't. I wasn't one day behind, um, but now I like to get up in the morning and read. The revised one-year plan is part of it in the morning, part of it at night. The two-year plan is just read the Old Testament and Proverbs the first year, and then read the New Testament and Psalms the second year. And then the three-year plan is to read the Old Testament selection the first year, the New Testament selection the second year, and the Psalm and Proverbs selection during the third year. I like to do my studying at a different time. I like to just rush through the one-year Bible. Even though I, I do get meditation and I do get lots out of it and out of the scripture, um, that is not my purpose. My purpose is just to get it read, just get it done. So um, the first few pages talk about the translation and how they translated it, dynamic as opposed to word perfect, you know, like word for word. And this is the team. They've tried very, very, very hard. And they, what they have said is, we pray that the New Living Translation will overcome some of the barriers of history, culture, and language that have kept people from reading and understanding God's Word. We hope that readers unfamiliar with the Bible will find the words clear and easy to understand, and that readers well-versed in the Scripture will gain a fresh perspective. We pray that readers will gain insight and wisdom for living, but most of all that they will meet the God of the Bible and be forever changed by Knowing Him, the Bible Translation Committee, July 2004. These are their names. So here is the beginning, 
January 1, Genesis 1, 1 to chapter 2, verse 25. And then it goes uh, right on to Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1 to chapter 2, verse 12. And then as we keep reading, it goes to uh, Psalm, chapter 1, verse 1 through 6. And then the Proverbs, chapter 1, 1 through 6. And then we go to January 2nd. One of the things that I really like about this particular way of reading the One Year Bible is that it helped me get through. One of the things that happened was when I started reading the One Year Bible, not reading the One Year Bible, but trying to read the Bible through in one year, I had felt guilty for many, many years. I'd never done it. Hadn't really been challenged to do it, but I had tried a couple of times. And as I was reading, I would read Genesis. Okay, that was interesting. Then I would read Exodus, and that was interesting. And then I would get into the ceremonial laws and how the Israelites were supposed to dig a hole when they went out to the bathroom. And, um, you know, Leviticus really, really got, you know, like, oh, my goodness, I'm trudging through. And that's about when I quit. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. And every year... Every time, well, I say every year, every time I tried to read it through in one year, that's where I got stuck. So with the One Year Bible, it is a really, really good plan because what happens is you get through um, Genesis. Okay, that's still good. Matthew's still good. And then what happens is when you get into Leviticus, it's just a little bit. And then you know very quickly it's going to change to the New Testament. And many, many times the New Testament and the Old Testament reading, I'll find something that goes together. It's like, oh my goodness, I just read that. I read about that in the Old Testament. And then as I read the Old Testament, just a little bit, just a little bit of it. And then I take a little bit of Psalms, which if you've read Psalms, a little bit goes a long way. There's a lot of emotion, a lot of ups and a lot of downs. And, you know, David wishing his enemies were dead and then he's glorious uh, and everything is good with the world. And Proverbs, it's good to, to bite a little bit of wisdom every day and to really think about what it is that you're that you're reading. So a little bit of Proverbs, a little bit of Psalms, and then, then a short reading in the New Testament, short reading in the Old Testament. And that way, it's, it was easy for me to get through the Bible the first year I tried it. I was successful. I was so excited. And when you read through the Bible, it just gives everything in the Bible a whole new perspective. When you take a little bit here and a little bit there, some people say that you can eat an elephant if you eat it bite a bite at a time. Well, if you eat a bite at the time at a time before you realize that it's a whole elephant, that you have no idea what you're eating. And it's kind of the same way with the Bible. If you study just a little bit at a time, it's good. It's not bad. But you really have no good, clear idea of what it is that you're chewing on. When you read through the whole Bible, you get a, a really good picture about the whole picture, the whole vision, the whole idea, the whole perspective. And it just really all comes together in a great way. And then it makes reading and studying those little parts very, um, a lot more, a, a lot more, um, well, I'm stumbling over my words, a lot easier to understand, to read the parts when you've read the whole thing. So I encourage you once again to get the One Year Bible, Tyndale House Publishing, and it's, you know, just Google it, it'll, you'll find it. And I uh, encourage you just to join us this year. Thank you.